welcome. Welcome, welcome to Kirk Conference 24. Good morning Congress, can you take your seats those of you that haven't already, we're going to make a start, I'm really impressed uh, that you've all made it for 10 o'clock this morning, the dance floor was still going strong at uh, midnight I think, so great to see you all uh, this morning, I'm Rose Marley, Chief Executive of Cooperatives UK. Um, so for those of you who have not been uh, here until today, we've invited a lot more uh, younger uh, members today, so a huge warm welcome. If you've never been to Congress at all, uh, especially if you don't know what a co-op is, but we're going to be having a whole youth summit next door, uh, while there'll be lots of workshops and you'll find out more about that shortly. So before we start, uh, like I say, I'd like to um, invite up, we've got a, a host today for our Youth Summit, uh, an incredible uh, woman uh, who I met actually at International Women's Day a few years ago. She's also, at the time she was on Asian Network Radio and now she's a DJ for Virgin Radio and she's going to be hosting our summit for us next, work, next door. So if I can welcome to the stage please uh, the amazing Harps Court. Morning, Harps. Morning. <laughs> How are we? You're very good. And you? Good, thank you. That was a really nice introduction. Thank you for that. And really true. Like I said, we met uh, a while ago on a, a stage for, on International Women's Day, and we were talking a lot about uh, the challenges um, that you faced in your career um, and being a, a woman and trying to affect change and, and do different things. So we're really honoured, actually. Thank you for hosting our Youth Summit. Um, what made you say yes? Well, thank you so much for having me, for starters, um, Rose, and you're right, we, we had a lot of uh, interesting chats the last time we met. Um, why did I choose to do this? To be really, really honest, if you want the truth, it's because even I want to educate myself a little bit more on co-ops, and I don't really know much about it too, so I think once I read the brief and I got into this a little bit more, I thought, actually, this is something that everyone should know about. So that's, that's the main thing that hooked me in. Fantastic. I'm sure you're going to learn uh, loads. And, and why do you think it's important from a young person's point of view? Mainly because I feel throughout my career on my journey, we never really had many events like this. Um, so it's so nice to see things like this being put on where not only does it bring so many people together, but we learn so much from one another as well. Each other's experiences, things that we might not have known about beforehand and just picking up other skills. So I think things like this are so important. Um, yeah, and I'm glad that not only am I a part of the event as a host, but I'll be educating myself along the way as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. And do you, um, in, in terms of uh, what they're going to cover today, give us a quick summary of the kind of things you're going to be doing next door. Okay, so a quick little summary for all of you to get your hands on next door. We'll be talking a little bit about creative businesses, how to live consciously, learning obviously a lot more about co-ops itself, but we've got some wonderful um, panellists and guest speakers that will be talking to us a little bit about their experiences on how they've built the communities that they're working on. So um, to get to know them a little little bit more better but also to share some of your thoughts and ideas so really I want everyone to get a little bit creative next door and get themselves involved and start getting their brains ticking on what kind of things they'd like to be involved with and share them with everyone in the room. And you talk about learning at our first session yesterday uh, we were given the advice to listen more from uh, Nihal uh, Athanayaka um, so we'll be doing a lot of uh, listening, but I do feel, I mean, well, what do you think about this? You know, we ask young people a lot, when do they get listened to and do we, is, it, is it the right thing to do? 
I feel like it's a good point you mentioned that, actually, because I think the youth do tend to get asked a lot about their opinions, but they don't tend to get much in response, do they? So I think that's why things like this are so important, because we will be doing a lot of listening, as you said. <laughs> Great, and also something we'll be talking more about next door, uh, we will be forming from this summit um, a youth advisory group for Cooperatives UK to inform the movement, so we'll be asking uh, that group to meet uh, monthly and actually decide what happens to the summit, decide what things come next, uh, and we will be making sure people are reimbursed for their time and effort, because again it's really important uh, to make sure that those um, um, there's an exchange of values that are recognised. So, my only final uh, request is uh, that you'll all come back at the end of the day and do a bit of a takeover. You're up for it. Yeah, I'm up for it. So, we are going to disperse in a second, but I promise you, you will get everybody back at the end as well, so don't worry. Just going to keep them busy for a while. Fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Haps. Can we hear a round of applause for thank our you. efforts? Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, and actually, a big part of that, and I would now like to welcome to uh, the podium who, somebody who's been actually quite inspirational, inspirational in making uh, the Youth Summit happen uh, in the way it's going to happen uh, next door uh, today. So uh, with a huge thanks and gratitude for all she's already doing for the movement as a new appointment to Co-op Group. It is uh, Chair of Co-op Group, Debbie White. Thank you, Rose, for those really, really kind words. And good morning, everyone. It's a real privilege for me to be here. And I would like, actually, to do a big call out to Rose and all of her team for a fabulous session yesterday. I think they all deserve a great round of applause. So I really enjoyed the sessions yesterday <clears throat> and I'm really looking forward to the insights and discussions that will come from the rest of today's events. Uh, as Rose said, I think it was in January, Rose, we started to talk about the Young People's Forum and um, one of my passions, as, as you, you'll all come to learn about me, is what's the future of our movement and I see really strongly the future is with our young people. So in the next 10 minutes or so, I'd like to achieve three things. I'd like to share a little bit about me, my background, who am I, uh, and what drew me to the cooperative movement, and in particular, the co-op group at this point in time. I'd like to talk a little bit about the co-op group, uh, the journey we are on. I know many of you will know a lot about the co-op group, but actually there's probably quite a few people here who, who don't. Uh, we have uh, an ambition to achieve 8 million member owners by 2030, uh, and, and we want those to be active owners, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And then finally, I'd like to touch on the real opportunity, I believe, that exists for our shared cooperative movement in the UK to become even more relevant for everybody, but particular, particularly for today's younger generation. And we heard yesterday from the cooperative party about uh, if the Labour Party get in power, we, what they think our, our ambitions should, should look like. So let me start by talking a little bit about, about me. Um, I was born in the northwest of England, not far from One Angel Square, or indeed Rochdale. I was actually born in, in Stockport. And now I live on the edge of the Peak District, uh, which really supports my love of wildlife and, and the great outdoors. I have three wonderful sons, two dogs, and one hugely supportive husband. And, and without all of them, including the dogs, I couldn't do what I do today. I began my career training as a chartered accountant in Manchester, and over the course of 40 years of being in business, I've held a range of different executive roles, including being a CEO of a public company and the CFO of a number of companies. As well as being the chair of co-op group, I sit on the board of a US medical tech company, which is a startup in the area of esophageal cancer, and I sit on the board of Spire Healthcare. One thing I'm particularly proud of is I'm honorary treasurer and trustee of a charity called Wellbeing of Women, which raises money to fund research into women's health uh, issues. And you'll have heard yesterday somebody mentioned the menopause pledge. Actually, that was something that Wellbeing of Women came up with and that they're doing a lot more in the space of period pain and other issues that affect all women wherever they are in their life cycle. As time has progressed, and I've had, as I say, 40 odd years in business, I've realized that there have been some really common threads in, to the businesses which I've worked with. 
They've generally been large, they've generally been quite complex with lots of things that needed to be done, but really importantly, they've been people-centric, values-led, with the appetite and ambition to do a lot more. And it's those characteristics which drew me to the co-op group, in particular, the values. I feel really fortunate, actually, to chair a business which epitomises the things that I hold dear and to be part of a much wider cooperative movement, which I've seen in spades over the last 24 hours, which shares and delivers the same values-based approach to doing business in service of its member owners. I'm really excited about the future and about the vision of our business and our goal to achieve the 8 million active member owners by 2030. Our intention in doing so is clear. If we significantly grow our membership over that period, it follows that we will increase the economic value that we can provide for our member owners. We must increase member engagement and participation. And if we do, the result we'll have is we'll increase the social impact we can have on broader society. No other business model that I'm aware of places such focus on achieving these wider outcomes. And that's why I'm so proud and humbled to be part of the co-op group and the wider cooperative family. At this point, I would like to recognise the great work undertaken by Shireen and all of her team over the past two years to put co-op group into a much stronger financial position. As, you, as some of you will know, we have reduced our net debt levels by 90%, which is an amazing achievement. And it provided us with the, the opportunity and capability to support our member owners, colleagues and communities during a cost of living crisis. I know we would not have been able to do the things that we did last year had we not got rid of a lot of that, of, a lot of that debt. We've also invested many millions of pounds into those things that our member owners told us mattered the most, including our commitment to education, apprenticeships, etc. We've, we've continued our investment in British farming, in fair trade, in free-range products. We've extended our 30% colleague discount indefinitely. And, of course, we've supported thousands of local community causes. And I just want to pick up on the 30% colleague discount. Every time I go into a store, it is the one thing that our colleagues tell us about, that how important and how helpful it is to them in, in their daily life. But to be able to deliver on our vision and goals, we must and we will maintain the strong commercial focus that allowed us to deliver so much for our member owners last year. I do believe a strong balance sheet and a strong member owner focus can and should be mutually inclusive of one another. And I think the co-op group is now demonstrating this. This combined strength of purpose and balance sheet is so important because the need for cooperation and cooperative thinking is critical to our future. As we've heard a number of times, this year the modern day cooperative movement is 180 years young and we have that beautiful plaque from our Italian colleagues that Rose is going to cherish. Uh, and we have the opportunity together to make our presence and impact felt more strongly than ever. I'm passionate about creating better and fairer pathways and opportunities for young people. And this is one area where our cooperative way of doing things shines through. And I'm really eager to listen and learn from our young people as we enter the Young People's Forum later today. I have been struck a little bit about the political parties during the election campaign, about how they've talked about their plans for young people, whether that's been through uh, apprenticeships, education, or perhaps even reintroducing, reintroducing national service. But where has the voice of young people been in all of this? And I would contrast that to the work the cooperative movement has been doing over the last few years, where we have garnered insight, we have listened to, and we've acted upon the wishes of our member owners, our members more broadly, we've had our young people's forums, etc. And it's really clear that the cooperative difference becomes clear and compelling to the young people who engage with us. Within Co-op Group, we've led the way in championing youth voice for 10 years through our Co-op Young Members Group, opening the door to member owners aged 16 to 25 to have a say and influence in the Co-op's group strategy, the products and service development, commercial and community partnerships. I was delighted to be able to join a session with our young people earlier this year, and I will continue to do so in the coming years. We are proud to be part of the Peer Active Collective, or PAC, uh, over £12 million programme giving young people the chance to make their communities safer and fairer places to live. 
The PAC influences school practices, local mental health services, violence reduction strategies, and supports more young people into employment. So together, we're ensuring the young voices respond to issues that directly affect them. We're also aiming to raise £5 million for our partnership with Bernardo's, which is bringing local communities together to support the positive futures of over 750,000 young people across the UK. It's designed in consultation with more than 1,400 young people, and the 20 services which are offered respond to the local community needs. We're developing online support and shareable content with young people to reach into all communities. And finally, in partnership with our co-op foundation and the hashtag I Will Fund, we support the Young Game Changers Fund. It's a four and a half million pound youth-led fund which provides grants of up to 20,000 pounds directly to young people aged 10 to 25 to fund their visions for a better future. I'm sure Nick Crofts later, the CEO of the Co-op Foundation, will speak more of his team's amazing work later today. So I'll leave, I'll leave that to him. Suffice to say, I'm really impressed with everything that they do, and particularly the listening they do with young people. As many of you will know, we have uh, our, our Co-op Academies Trust. Often our, our, our schools are located in, in areas which are beset with social and economic challenges. And prior to joining the Co-op Trust, a lot of these schools are classed as inadequate or requires improvement. But by the end of last year, two-thirds of our academies were rated good or outstanding. And indeed, yesterday I got the most recent result of another outstanding school. Since becoming chair, I've had the real pleasure of visiting Co-op Academy Bellevue, which is just about the nearest school to, to our office in Manchester. And I have been truly blown away by what they're offering their students but also the role students are playing in making their school a fantastic place to be. They couldn't be more deserving, in my opinion, of their outstanding rating and true ambassadors of how, by applying cooperative values, you can affect lasting and positive change. <clears throat> we also continue to be inspired by our friends at Mid Counties Co-op with their brilliant Little Pioneers nurseries. Uh, again, I'd, I'd love to visit one of those one day if I, if I get the opportunity. And I know Shireen has kept their work very front of mind as she works in cooperation with other leaders as part of the Royal Foundation's Business Task Force for Early Childhood. So in closing, I'd like to say, uh, I'll share a little story, which actually was, was picked up by Rebecca in a recent interview I did with her. But very recently, one of my son's friends seemed to really enjoy the fact that as a member owner of the co-op group, I worked for him. And I was absolutely delighted that he'd made that connection. And that's what I want all of our member owners. We are here in service of our member owners. And that is something that I hold very dear to my heart. He understood the role of a cooperative and the influence that he had. And it left me even more determined to see that same realisation in all of our member owners, and in particular, our young people. It's my personal mission for them to understand everything we can do to support them and with them and the potential that they can realise with our businesses and with our movement. I'm really heartened to see so many younger faces here with us today who are, who are keen to show what they've done from a cooperative perspective but also to learn and, uh, and I'm delighted to be able to join them. So in drawing myself to a close, hopefully I've achieved my objectives in that you know a little bit more about me, my reasons, my excitement, and my passion for engaging young people in what we do and stand for. Thank you to Rose and Co-ops UK for inviting me to speak today. It's been an honor and a privilege. Have a brilliant rest of the day, everybody. Thank you.